my cheesecake video. We are going to make my famous meatloaf. I'm telling you, once you make it this way, it's so easy and simple. Your family and you will enjoy it. If you have a special someone, a husband, boyfriend, whoever, a best friend, they will fall in love with you all over again. I have a special new someone in my life, and he fell in love with me all over again when I made this. So let's get started, you guys. You want to start with the biggest bowl you have. This is the biggest bowl I have, okay? Now, you want to take your rings off because you're going to be going hands deep in this meat right here. Right here. I have three pounds of just ground beef, okay? If you want a bigger meatloaf, you're more than welcome to double the recipe. But once you add everything in it, it will make, it will make this almost double, okay? So now, you want an easiest way? Just cut it open with your knife and start putting it in your bowl, okay? Like so. So now we got that put in there, okay? So now, you want to go to your sink. Excuse me for a minute, I'm going to wash my hands. Okay guys, so I got my hands washed with soap water. Um, any kind will do. Uh, we like our Dawn dish soap here. So just make sure you get them fully dry after you have touched the hamburger meat. You don't want to be cross-contaminating anything. Now the next step you're going to do, you're more than welcome to chop it yourself, but I got this little chopper for Christmas, one of the things. So I'm going to use this because it's so much easier. Bear with me, it's going to be loud. Okay, so you want it about that fine. You're going to do a whole small onion, okay? I'm going to add this in. I'm going to continue chopping it like this, and I'll be right back with you guys. Okay, guys, so I always keep a hand towel on uh, the side here for wiping my hands when I'm messing with chopping veggies. But this is what a small onion looks chopped up, finely minced. We like everything really, really small. So it's not falling out of your meatloaf as you're eating it. Because it's going to be kind of fall apart anyways. Okay, so now, your next step, if you have whole garlic cloves, use about two of them. I buy them, I started buying them chopped. You're going to do about a half a tablespoon, that's about two chopped up garlic cloves, okay? Depending on, well, I guess depending on what size your garlic cloves are, okay? You are going to add one egg. I always pre-crack it in my bowl. If you don't like egg, don't add the egg. You are going to add two big handfuls of any cheese of your choice. A lot of times we'll use pepper jack, but today I had the mixed Mexican blend. That's what I'm using. Now, here we go with my dashes, you guys. Now, you guys are all aware of the hot sauces I bought. You're going to do about 10 dashes of your hot sauce. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? Okay. Then you're going to come over here and grab your Worcestershire sauce. You're going to do about five dashes of this. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Then you're going to come over here and you're going to grab your ketchup. Okay. What I like to do, I like to do one big squirt around like that. Get a close-up on the squirt here. 
a big squirt around, just kind of like in a circle. Then, this is another key ingredient of mine. Not a lot of people see it. It is beef bouillon. Now, if you look on the inside, it's powder. Okay? So, Hannah, you want to grab me another spoon here? This one's kind of wet. Okay, so you want to take either a teaspoon or a tablespoon. How much you desire is up to you. This is got salt in it, so it is a salt content. Okay? So I'm going to do about two teaspoons, okay? Now, secret to this, it will help moisturize your meatloaf and it will give you a good salt content. Who doesn't like kind of a salty burger, right? Okay. Now, here's another ingredient. Hernandez salsa. Now, I normally buy a little can. Stay right there. I'm going to show you guys the size of can I normally buy. Okay. Now, this is the green salsa verde uh, version. This will not be going in there, but this is the size of can and the brand, same brand, that you're going to buy for your meatloaf. So you only want to use about this much amount of it, this if you do the big can, okay? So I'm just going to open this up and kind of eyeball it. I'll probably take my tablespoon here, okay? Now, this is going to give it so much flavor. It's not going to taste Mexican-y. It's not going to taste like anything other than some good old-fashioned barbecue meatloaf. So, you're going to come in here. And I think that can is probably about maybe four or five tablespoons. So, I think I'm going to do about five tablespoons. Okay? It's got your green chilies, your tomatoes, your onion, your cilantro, everything that you would like to put in a meatloaf. Some people don't do tomatoes. That's fine. You don't have to use this at all. But it does give it good content. It smells good. Okay? Now, another type of meatloaf that I make as well, you guys, I want to talk about this for a minute, is a bacon cheeseburger meatloaf. Now, I like to use pepper jack cheese, a whole 8-ounce bag of it, with all my different ingredients. But once you get your meatloaf in your pan, you wrap it in bacon. Yes. Oh, so yummy bacon, you guys. Yummy. And then you can use either your ketchup or your barbecue sauce. We like barbecue sauce on top. Now, paprika. Big old thing of paprika. You want to have a big thing on hand. Now, if you guys have watched many of my videos and you're my subscribers, you all know that I measure by palm full. Okay? With this being so big, you're going to do about three palm fulls of paprika. If you want it to taste kind of like Mexican food side or taco, you can get the Mexican paprika. There's three, or two, excuse me, and three. This is going to give your meatloaf a smoky flavor. Now, your next smoky component is cumin. Now, you're not going to put as much cumin, but you are going to put a palm full of cumin. Okay? Now, take your pepper, give about 10 dashes, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We'll do 11 for good luck. All right. Now, remember, we had already put in the beef bouillon that's got a salt content. So take it easy with your salt. If you do a palm full, you want to do a small palm full. Okay, then 
you have to eyeball your breadcrumbs. Now, if you do not like breadcrumbs, uh, you can use crackers, you can use oatmeal, anything that you like in your meatloaf. I like to buy the seasoned breadcrumbs or the Italian breadcrumbs, and they also have Romano cheese in them. Okay, so we're going to do one, two, three, four, and five. You're going to start with five. Mix it around well, and you want to feel your texture. It's all texture at this point. If it does not feel like the texture it should be, then you want to add some more pomfuls a little bit at a time. So now we're going to get our hands in here. Okay. Now, you guys all heard me say something about barbecue sauce. <clears throat> Excuse me. You are going to be putting your barbecue sauce on top of your meatloaf. Now, remember too, with a good mixing quality, tongue twisted again here today, you guys. You want to always mix with your hands. Have one clean to hold your bowl and one for the mixing. If you have both dirty, then your bowl is just gonna scoot all over the place and it's probably gonna end up on the floor, you guys. Now, I wanna talk a little bit here. You guys know that I'm all about family and all about living in the country with my fur babies and my kiddos and all that good stuff, okay? This right here, you guys, is definitely a family pleaser. You can get your kids in the kitchen with you and they would love to mix this meatloaf together for you, okay? But the best way to mix it, and if you have your child doing it or whoever's helping you, want to grab from the side and mix in. Side, mix in. Sometimes you have to flip it over. If you like it on the spicy side, you're more than welcome to add banana peppers in it, um, chopped up jalapeno. Um, if you use jalapeno, I suggest maybe the pickled ones out of a jar or a can, because if you do fresh jalapeno, you're probably going to be on the toilet with your butt burning later. Just saying, guys. <laughs> so while I'm mixing this meatloaf, I want to talk about a little bit about what's been going on. We have three new additions to our family here, you guys. I have my significant other. I found my soulmate. He's here as well. He's at work right now, though, but he will be eating this delicious meatloaf. We have his kitty cat, Summer. She is a chunky little calico broker. She loves to give high five. I love her to pieces. We also have Sibby. He named him Sybaris, but we call him Sibby. He is a pit puppy, and he is so cute. So, I don't know where they're at right now, so I can't show them to you. But one of these times, I'm sure they'll be in the kitchen when I'm cooking, and I'll probably be tripping over them with all the other kitty cats. And then you guys will get to see them. Okay, so this is almost incorporated. You want to make sure you also give it a good squeeze like this. And make sure all your seasonings get incorporated really well. Okay. Yeah, guys, I am just getting over a bad double ear infection. Um, I had to actually go to the ER for it. Because I actually lost the hearing in my right ear from it. I had so much fluid inside of it that I couldn't hear anything or anybody and it was so painful I couldn't stand up. So that's why, another reason why 
I haven't been recording. I know we were um, had colds and stuff in the past as well, but it was just going around. When you have a family, it just keeps going around. Okay, so I wanted to tell you guys, with this meatloaf we're making, we're also going to be making some cheesy mashed potatoes to go with it and some biscuits. So I will show you guys how to do that as well while the meatloaf is baking and close to being done. Okay? All right, so depending on how dry you like your meatloaf or how moist, we like it moist to where it's almost falling apart but still holding together. Okay, so get a good view over here for me, Hannah. You want, see that? You want your meatloaf like this if you want it real moist, okay? Over here I have some disposable uh, pans that I like to cook them in. They put cook evenly and perfectly in these. Um, so you just come over here, okay, you want to, um, evenly put them in your pans. If you have four, three, two, whatever, you want to evenly put your meatloaf in them because you don't want one meatloaf bigger than the other because you will have some kids complaining. <laughs> Just saying, guys. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to continue putting these in the pan um, before I go here. I'm going to show you how to put them together here before I pop them in the oven. Now, I like to kind of form a log while it's down in here like this, okay? A log like this. Then you can start smashing down, okay? And you want to make it even everywhere. The reason being for starting off with a log, it's all incorporated together, smashed together. And then look how evenly you can press it down, you guys. So I'm going to continue doing this, and then I will show you the next step. Action. Okay, guys. So we have the meatloafs the way we want them. They're right here. We ended up with four little containers. These are going to be wonderful when they're done. We have our oven set about 350. Now here's the catch. You're going to cook them for 30 minutes at 350. Then you are going to add your barbecue sauce on top. Turn this to broil and stick it in there for another 5 to 10 minutes. And you are having like a barbecue cheeseburger. But meatloaf, guys, is that not awesome so I'm gonna go ahead and set these in you can set them on a cookie sheet today I'm not doing it just put them in here you do want to set your timer you don't want to burn them you want to come over here and set your timer for 30 minutes sometimes I will go in at 20 minutes and add my barbecue sauce and then add extra at the broil time but you don't have to really until you're 30 minutes. So basically, just leave it alone for 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, however you want to do it. We'll come back when they're ready to have the barbecue sauce on them. I'll show you how to do that. And then when they're done, we'll have a taste test. Oh, and don't forget, the we're going to be making those cheesy mashed potatoes, guys. So stay tuned, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, guys, so while the meatloaf is going in the oven, it has about 13 to 14 minutes to go before I can add the barbecue sauce. I promised you guys I was going to make my cheesy mashed potatoes. But I also forgot to mention, not only are they cheesy, they're creamy and garlicky. So when you're making these kind, you don't need gravy. They're just delicious that way. If you have bacon bits, add bacon bits in. You can add anything you want. 
We prefer no gravy when we make them this way because they're just delicious by themselves. So, I have about 10 to 11 peeled whole potato, russet potatoes here. Uh, depending on the size of your family, you could use the 10. 10 feeds about 5 to 6 people. If you have more, you probably want to double your recipe. The best thing about making mashed potatoes is, let me go over here. I forgot to show you guys this part. Over here, I have some water going, a half a pan of water. Now, here is a trick I've learned. I have my EBOO here, my extra virgin. Couple swishes in your water. It's not going to make your potatoes taste weird or anything like that. It's just going to keep them from sticking. Now, when salting your water, you want to get it heated before you add salt because it will strip your pans out. Here we go with the palm again. Palm in. Okay? Put your lid back on. Let it continue to heat. While it's heating, you come over here and you start chopping your potatoes. Now, what's great about this, you guys, you just give them a rough chop like that. Chop them like that. You got bigger potatoes than others. You go chop, chop, chop. You're done. So I'm going to continue chopping these. And when I get them chopped, I'll show you what they look like and what the next step is going to be. Okay, guys. So I have them all chopped up. Now, what I was telling you before I uh, finished chopping these up, you can cut them this big even. They're still going to boil either way. You're going to be mashing them, so you don't have to be real particular. Also as well, when I mentioned cheesy, garlicky, creamy, here is your garlic. You got your minced garlic. Come over here to your boiling water. Put you about a half a teaspoon in there. Okay, this is just the first part of the garlic going in there. Okay, at the end when you're mashing them and creaming them and putting your cheese and everything in, you will be putting garlic powder in as well. But the reason why we're adding that garlic to the water now is because you want it to cook. You don't want to bite into a crunchy garlic. Okay, so I take my whole board and I come over here. And I just drop a few in at a time because if this water splashes up on you, you are going to burn yourself. Sorry about that mishap in the background, you guys. That cooking. is my son-in-law. I am cooking cheesy garlic mashed potatoes. Are you ready for some of those? Yeah. Tell our friends and family how good they are. They're really good, guys. Yeah, the kids, they had a great Christmas, and they're just trying to run all over the house and find what all they got. They got some phones and cameras and different stuff. My daughter got a new iPhone today. She's all ecstatic about that. <laughs> Careful. Okay, so now, if your water gets this full, and it's already covering your potatoes... You can grab you a coffee cup and take some of the water out. But just know, you always want to make sure you have enough water in your pot, but not too much. Okay? I seen you looking in my oven, girl. <laughs> I was looking at the meatloaf. Okay, so you want your water about like this. This will boil over with you having a lid on it. So now at this point, you want to kind of tip your lid right here and turn your heat down to about five. Sometimes if it will still boil over at five, just come in here, take it off the heat for a minute, wipe your water up and turn it down to four. Trust me, they will be wonderful, yummy and cheesy and creamy. So, will these boil? 
I'm going to let you guys go do what you need to do. And when they get to the next step, when they're done boiling, I will show you the next step. And I also, at that time, will show you what to do next with the meatloaf. Okay, guys, so my timer beats. We're ready to take the meatloafs out. I'm going to show you how I drain them. Nobody likes greasy meatloaf. Then we're going to turn the oven up to boil and add our barbecue sauce. Five, ten minutes, meatloaf will be done, guys. So here we go. I'm going to just pull these out. Set them up here. See all that juice? All that grease? This is what I was talking about. You want to make sure you drain these. Okay. Kind of looks like... like a... This yeah. is because hamburger meat always makes its own grease. Looks like a you steak. You always want to have the hottest water running in your oven. Use two pot holders. Drain. Then... You want to go to your next side and drain. The reason being why I go side to side is because grease travels. So you could have a pocket of grease on this side, and you could have a pocket of grease on the other side. I was going to get that other one, but you know. So now, pick it up. we're going to drain all these, okay, because we got four of them going here. We got... Some hungry kids and my hungry soulmate here. He they just smell got, good. They do, don't they? He just got home from work, so I have one hungry man. There's a lot of steam coming. Okay, so. Disclaimer. They shrink down quite a bit. Let's show them a shot here, Hannah. They shrink down quite a bit. That's why you want to make as much as you can. Okay. So I'm going to continue to drain these and then I will show you what the next step is. Alright guys, so we got them all drained. This is what they look like. Okay, now we're going to come over here and we're going to hit custom broil and start. That's going to start heating up while we add our barbecue sauce. Just squeeze it on here. You can use any kind you want. I'm actually going to take this lid off. Today we have... Honey Barbecue Buffalo Boneless Wild Wings. Um, it is so good. The next one that we like is Sweet Baby Ray's. But we thought we'd try this today. I'm going to just take the lid off. Okay. And everybody loves barbecue sauce. So I'm going to dash them. Who does not like tons of barbecue sauce? I know, right? I'm just ready to Does that eat. look good, Hannah? Yeah. Does it smell good? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm ready to eat. I know. I'm starved, too. I ate a lot of ramen noodles today. So, I hope all of my friends and family had a good Christmas this uh, past month here. Well, we're still in December, I guess. Tomorrow's the new year. We're almost there. I'm getting confused for 2020. But I tell you what, I got the best 2020 going on here. I have a wonderful life. And I am enjoying every bit of it. So I think it needs to be dashed some more. What do you think? Yeah. Let's just, I'll say, uh, we'll use the rest of the bottle. What do you think? Need a lot of barbecue sauce. Uh, we can save that for some at the something else. There's a tiny bit in there. Can I get an oh so yummy, Hannah? Oh so yummy. Oh so yummy. Okay. They do look good. They look delicious, don't they? It All right, look like guys. Meatloaf. <laughs> so, I want you guys to think about this, okay? Imagine a nice, thick, juicy barbecue cheeseburger on the grill. But with meatloaf works in it. Tell me if that would not be amazing. These remind me of that. So guys, I have another little treat I decided. I just took right off the top of my head. Hold on. Bear right with me. I think this is an extra special occasion. 
considering it's New Year's Eve and everybody is going into the new year with their loved ones. I think I'm going to add cheese. Oh, add some more cheese on top. What do you guys think about that? I like cheese. We all like cheese. All right, guys. So I'm going to continue to do this. Once you add just, you just need just a little bit more cheese on top. You don't have to if you don't want to, but you can. Now, I'm going to pop these under the broiler. And when I'm ready to take them out, I will show you how to make these mashed potatoes. We'll wrap it up and have a great taste test. And always remember, I have a Facebook page called Country Views and Instagram Country Views. Like, subscribe. If you're new to my channel, view all my videos. I have about 22, 23 on there. You're more than welcome to comment. And if there is a specific recipe that you want me to make, comment below oh so yummy and tell me what it is i always respond to all of my viewers and all of my friends and family so i'm going to pop these right under the broiler look how hot that is Woo! i got a facial holy macaroni that sounds good macaroni oh yeah that'd be a good idea for another cooking video here my homemade ham alfredo macaroni and cheese divine all right guys so we got these under the broiler we'll be back in just a minute and we will show you how to make these mashed potatoes okay guys so this is what they look like when they are ready to come out does that not look wonderful so i'm gonna pull these out of course we still gotta wait on the potatoes to get done but you always want your meatloafs to sit at room temperature and set up before you cut into them. Reason being, they're going to fall apart on you. Look at this. Get a good view of this for our friends and family. Oh, so yummy, right guys? Okay, so while these set up, I'm going to continue getting these potatoes done. When I get them done... And ready to the next step to put my ingredients I will come back and show you guys okay guys so I'm really excited my potatoes got done way early look at that amazing so I'm gonna come over here that's hot so I'm gonna take my pot holders of course don't mind my pot holders I've had them for years they're old I gotta get new you're gonna drain them now remember how I showed you to do a little oil and salt Look, they don't stick to the pan. Now, you want to stick your pan on a pot holder now. Once these are drained, just give them a quick shake. Come over here, dump them right back in your pan. Okay? They smell good. And that is hot. <laughs> All right. So what I like to do is I put a whole stick and a half of butter, butter, excuse me, right on top. Okay. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put your cheese in there with it. This make it makes it a lot easier when you start smashing. And since the look at this big old bag of cheese that my gone. my fiance bought me. <laughs> is that not a big bag Hannah it's almost gone now nah, there's still a bunch in here trust me yes. all right guys so you want about two handfuls if you like it super cheesy which yeah we do there we go you're gonna add more you can add any kind of cheese you want now the next thing you're gonna do is put your lid on let it start steaming getting melty okay meanwhile while that's doing that we're going to come over here and take our biscuits out yes i made biscuits too you cannot have meatloaf without biscuits that's just not doable you have to have biscuits now 
A lot of people like butter. I usually make a garlic herb butter, but I didn't feel like it. There's a lot of herbs in the meatloaf and stuff, so we're good to go on that. Now, that's out. I'm going to shut my oven off. I'm going to come over here. See how it started melting a little bit? You're going to just take your masher or your blender, depending on how creamy you like it. I'm just going to give it a rough mash here. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to keep mashing. Burk it out of that cheese, girl. What? Oh. Hannah Bear, you guys, loves cheese. She always be sneaking cheese. I got mashed potatoes on me. So you want to give it a good rough mash, depending on how creamy. You got to use your muscles. Look, here, check it out. I got some muscles. <laughs> Actually, I'm a weakling, you guys. I'm just picking on you. Okay, so now you want about this consistency here. Okay. Your song is on. Hmm? Yours and Jim's song is on. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, so take that out. Now you want to come over here with your spoon, my tie dye spoon. Give it a stir around the sides. Looks beautiful. And there. You're going to take heavy whipping cream. This is where it comes in creamy. Count to about 10. One. But pour slow. Then oh. you want to take your ranch of choice. Does everybody like ranch in there? One, here? two, three. Okay. Now. Here we go with our palmfuls, you guys. Palm full of salt. Bam. Ten. About ten dashes of pepper. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, I did a little extra. Garlic powder. Remember I did the garlic, crushed up garlic in the water. Now you're doing your powder. Okay. And the key ingredient, the must key ingredient, if you ever had KFC mashed potatoes, you will know your key ingredient is paprika. Okay? Now you're going to stir all this together. Like so. I just absolutely love my new pans, you guys. If you watched my other vi one of my other videos, I got these for my birthday from my kids. It came with the tie-dye spoons and the set of pans. I absolutely love it. Look how good these are. Oh my goodness, those are amazing. And look how everything just melted. Look at that. Looks so beautiful. Why don't you grab a fork over there and see, and you can taste the little taste of it. I got a spoon. A little spoon. All right, guys, I'm going to feed Hannah Bear here. Y'all let them know how good it is. Is it good? Do I get some, oh, some yummy thumbs up? Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, guys. I'm going to cover this up. I gotta let my meatloaf set for a few more minutes and then we can cut it up, okay? So I will be right back with you guys. All right, guys, so we have everything ready here. We got our biscuits, our mashed taters, and our oh so yummy meatloaf, okay? So these should, should be touchable. Come over here. You want to cut slices with the sharpest knife you have. And I have a special guest today, you guys. My soulmate, my one and only. He is going to try this delicious food on camera for me. Okay, back up a little bit here. Baby, you wanna hold this plate for me?
you got about slices like that. Now you can make them thicker, you guys, but I like using these pans. Baby, I'm just gonna give you a whole pan to yourself because I know you love my meatloaf. Yes. My man is a hard worker. He works 10 hour days. He is amazing. Okay, so we got that. Now we're going to give him some mashed potatoes. You want a big helping of those, baby? And how many biscuits would you like? Change it, change it. Do you want banana peppers? No? Okay, here is your fork, baby. Let the camera know how you like it. Let our friends and family know how you like it, I should say, actually. <laughs> there are no trees inside of me. In this sense, it's I can look at you with love. Seeing all that I can love. Can you stay? Yeah, we got it. Oh, so yummy.